Greetings from the Sugar Beet Topper. So you can see those are topped beets over there and behind me. And those, of course, are untopped. You can see they're kind of brown. Well, that is because we've had some frost and the leaves have died on some of them. And you can actually see if you look really close on some of them, you see some new leaves poking up. So here's a beet. You can see a frozen leaf here. And if you look down here, you see all these new leaves coming up. We don't want that. That's not good. We don't want that. So it's time to get these beets out of the ground. And guess what? We've only got, this is our second to last field, baby. So we're getting there. It is day 11 of beet harvest, thinking we'll hopefully have 12 days of beet harvest. And we're gonna be wrapping her up here pretty quick. But anyway, let's get rolling. Welcome to the Red River Valley of North Dakota. A land flowing with milk and honey. You're watching Beat Farmin' Mitch. Kind of missed this job. It's been a couple years since I ran this thing. Well, I think you've got a job for a while now today. So it is day 11. I've been getting up at 12.50 a.m. every day. And then I'm usually out here about by 1.30 a.m. And then I'm usually out in the field at work until... Oh, it depends on the day. If something breaks down at the end of my shift, well, then I'm out here longer. But I'd say averaging probably 5 p.m.-ish. That's usually when I get done. And that's not too bad. You can handle that. Some days when it gets to be like 6 p.m., 7 p.m. 7 p.m., that gets to be a pretty, pretty short night if you keep, keep going at that. I think I just saw a bunny go into the beats over here. There he is. There he is. So Casey's running that harvester right there, and the other harvester has a belt that blew out on the grab rolls. So Jason's fixing that. My dad and I are on the topper crew, and we got a whole crew of trucks just rocking and rolling right now. I guess I better not fall asleep here. That wouldn't be too good for any of us. Isn't this just the slickest setup right here? This has been a nice benefit of beet harvest. You got your coffee, you got your lunchbox. I'm running out of snacks though. Oh hey, okay, we still got Ducky with us. Thanks, Jenny. Well, I'm on the last pass over here. Everybody's pretty fired up. We're ready to be done. My dad's coughing at a new opening there. Casey's in that harvester and Jason's in that harvester. So we got our two harvesters going and we don't normally top this far ahead. Uh, 
Uh, we just know we'll get through this here pretty quick. So short rounds on this field. I forgot to mention, so this thing is called many terms. It is the tool of many terms. It is rotavator, defoliator, topper, all those things you can refer to it as. If the temperature is too hot or too cold, like it's freezing, we don't want the beets to be exposed. We don't want them to freeze or we don't want them to get too hot in the ground or we can't store them in the piles. And so a lot of times we have just one topper going and the harvester literally a stone's throw behind harvesting and we stop as we can harvest as we can. And so sometimes we gotta do that so it's nice when the weather is just this perfect beet digging weather. We can just keep rolling and rocking. Well, now you could say we're baking with beet sugar here because we've got two harvesters rolling, Casey's in one, Jason's in one, two toppers rolling, my dad's in that one, I'm in this one, and we got six trucks running, so we're, moving, we're hauling some sugar, that's for sure. pass on the second to last field and we're moving to our last field of sugar beets it is 3 p.m and it's we still you know we got to drive there it's probably gonna be an hour long road trip with the tractor at least so i'm taking off for there as soon as i'm done here so we're gonna head to the next field and get rip rolling there and i'll probably help we'll probably help get moved there and whatnot and then night shift's gonna bail out of here because hopefully tomorrow we finish we got a jackrabbit on the run. Is he gonna go all the way? Is he gonna go all the way? Come on, just go. Cross the headland and you're free. You're free from fear and anxiety. Just cross the headland. That's all you gotta do is cross over. Oh, he's gonna wait right at the end. I'm just gonna hang out until I'm there. Oh, he'll move. Yeah, there you go, finally. All the way. Freedom. Time to hit the road. Nice and green overall. I mean, usually they look a lot greener than this. These just weren't affected by the freeze or it didn't freeze quite as hard up here. Uh, you can see they're still pretty green compared to that last field. Which beets generally look very green and lively when you harvest them. It's just when they freeze, they can't handle that. But they are a very resilient plant. I mean, they're biennials, meaning it's a two year growth cycle. They wouldn't survive the cold winters up here more than likely, maybe a select few would but they would just freeze and die. But anyway, in a better climate, maybe a little warmer winters, they would kind of go dormant and then the next year they would go to seed. So they save their good old sugary tap root for energy. But instead, we harvest their good old sugary tap root for energy. But anyway, it's 519 and we'll see how it goes tonight, but we might be pushing a little bit just because we're on our last field and we're moving right now and We'll just have to see it, see how she goes, but we'll see it tonight and we'll gear up for what the last day of beet harvest brings. Look at this nice note Jenny made me. Doesn't she have immaculate handwriting? 
Well, it's 6.30, made it home. That ain't too bad, but I do need to eat, shower, and go to bed as soon as I can. So, you know, the morning, it just, it go, it comes quick. It comes like... Yep. Wham. It comes quick. Day 12, everybody. Day 12. Hopefully the last day of beet harvest today. See you in the harvester. Day 12 is a go. The last field, loading trucks, here we are. Life is good, man. We're gonna do it, we're gonna make it. Looks like I got some mud building up on that boom. I have to go clean that off. As soon as I'm done loading trucks and I got them in, I'm gonna go pop that off with the scraper. There's usually always something I'm checking on this thing if I get a break like this. Some nights it's really slow with the trucks coming back, so then I'll just kind of hang out in here and stay warm if I'm caught up on stuff. But, you know, cleaning mud. I'll see mud building up. Gotta go clean that's dry this year, so thankfully that's not as much of an issue. Uh, a lot of times I've got to oil up the chains, check the tensions, just kind of look over some stuff. But when it's six in the morning and it's pretty cold out and windy, Really just try to kind of do what I need to do and stay warm in here. Well, it should be pretty easy for the truck drivers to find their way now. So we always have these flashing lights. You can kind of see them over there. We mark our driveways out and the corners that they need to turn on so they know where to go. Cause this, I mean, it's hard to see at night, but we, we are guided by a pillar of cloud over there. That's the factory and that's where they're going. So it should be pretty easy to find their way if they get lost or turned around. I need a sip of coffee. This might be my last tractor cab sunrise for a while. There's the sun. It bites outside, it's a little chilly. Well, I gotta wait for a truck, so I might as well have some lunch. And I don't have to use a chicken strip spoon this time, because I remember to bring a spoon. It's like the only two times I forgot to do that I've been filming. So today, we have some Campbell's Chunky Turkey Wild Rice Soup. Delicious. To Thanksgiving this year. It's always a good time. Done with harvest. It's winter, you can relax. In fact, tonight it's supposed to get down to like 19 degrees, and I'm thinking it's gonna be too cold to harvest beets tonight. So, guys that have beets left, they're probably gonna have to stop tonight. I'd assume their beets will start to freeze too much. So, then we just got a little bit left, so hopefully. We've got this round here and an opening over there, so we shouldn't have to worry about that. And I am glad, so. It is 9 a.m. and we're getting there. We've got only a couple hours left if things keep sailing smooth. Things keep sailing smooth. Well, we were just about done and a hose or something blew on the Ferris wheel on here, so there's a pile of beets in there and yeah, but good thing we got a second lifter, so I'm gonna go switch into that real quick here. We're gonna have to get this emptied out at least. So close, so close. Well, Jason's running the second harvester over there now. That's the one that I had a hose blow out on, so in the meantime, they fixed that. I hopped in here, and we kept going. So that was the nice thing about having two harvesters, but they said it was kind of, Jason was talking to me on the radio, and they had to took a tow rope up to the ferris wheel and pull it with a pickup about 30 times to bust all the beats loose in there. I'm thinking the hose lost pressure, was spinning a little bit slower for a little bit, and then just kind of packed it in there, then the hose burst, so. Got all packed in the ferris wheel, but they got her out and we got her going, and this is all we have left. So, man, I am excited for this 2022 beet harvest to be done. This is day number 12, we're hanging in there. Here we go, the last pass. Well, you got the last load there, Mitch, so let her out. Well, Mr. Beat Factory, you can take it from here. We got all the beats off. They're all at the piler. We're on the way home. That's one of the sweetest sounds I think I've ever heard. Wow. 
Well, folks, we made it. We're home. Ugh, oh, feels good to be home. Some long days. Some long hours. But everybody's safe. We made it home. And by golly, we're here. Anyway, this is Beat Farmer Mitch. And don't forget to keep it sweet. And don't forget to get some rest. It's time for bed.